Uh, we, we do include um, certainly measures that deal with, with some of the, um, the expansion uh, of, of jurisdiction that we have seen within agencies, whether it is as it relates to waters of the U.S. and, and, and basically telling the EPA that um, they should not advance with implementation of that proposed rule. Uh, also with the Clean Power Plan, uh, which would um, uh, limit, really limit uh, Alaskans' ability to, to advance um, any, much of any uh, development. Uh, we also have provisions um, that are, are strong and beneficial from a conservation uh, perspective in terms of how we uh, manage and utilize and gain access to our public lands in the state of Alaska. Uh, we help facilitate energy development in the state with um, increases to onshore oil and gas programs as well as our some of our offshore programs. Um, we we uh, direct the BLM to uh, deal with some of the outstanding uh, issues that have slowed or stalled um, progress in Greater Moose's Tooth area in the National Petroleum Reserve. So again, how we figure out ways to fill up our, our oil pipeline. Uh, we have considerable trust obligations to Alaska Natives and American Indians. Um, the IHS Indian Health Service and BIA uh, clearly represent uh, substantive portions uh, of our budget and we work to, to address not only education and infrastructure needs, uh, we provide for full funding for contract support costs, which is incredibly important and, and again will be most welcome uh, by, by all those around the state uh, as we look to ensure uh, that the health care needs of, of our uh, Native people are, are addressed. For the first time ever, we provide funding for, for our, our tribal courts uh, in Alaska that are subject uh, to a different area of funding um, that, that uh, they have not been able to access before. We uh, ensure that um, when it comes to, to, to the health and, and safety needs, uh, areas uh, such as, as um, uh, sanitation facility construction are, are addressed. Uh, we, uh, let's see, I'm going through a long list of, of things, just trying to, to, to hit some of the highlights here. But uh, as, as you all know back home right now, we have um, um, huge forest fires or fire, forest fires that are, are threatening our communities down on the Kenai Peninsula and up in uh, South Central around Willow. Uh, of course, the interior is always a, a fire threat during the summer. Uh, I think one area that um, is, is really important for us to focus on is that within this budget, we end fire borrowing. In other words, we fund 100% of the 10-year average of fire suppression costs, and then if those costs exceed that, we allow for uh, emergency uh, or disaster funding. Um, so I think it is important as we in Alaska are, are dealing with the realities of what happens with, with fires in a state like ours to know that uh, we are responsibly funding um, our, our, our suppression efforts, but at the same time we're working aggressively to ensure that um, uh, those those fire thinning and, and preventative measures are, are addressed uh, throughout this bill and that the programs that uh, are designed to help uh, provide for healthier forests, that those programs haven't been robbed of their resources because uh, we, we have not, we've basically borrowed from one program to another to help fund our fires in, in previous years. So the fire aspect is, is very, very important for us. Uh, another area that I'll bring up is 
is that of, of uh, our, our public lands, uh, recognizing that next year is the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service. We have uh, worked to, to put a dent in the backlog of, of maintenance within our Park Service. We got about a $30 billion maintenance backlog within the Park Service. And so to, to be able to address some of that uh, through funding for the Centennial Initiative is, is important. Uh, for us as well. Um, uh, again, I could keep going on. We've got efforts to, uh, to, to do more to help our struggling uh, timber industry, particularly down in Southeast, but uh, we also uh, allow for inventories of, of our interior forests for the first time. Um, so we're, we're working in that regards to help those in the timber industry. For those in mining, we have uh, provisions that, uh, again, work to ensure that we don't have duplicative and burdensome and costly uh, requirements uh, for, for uh, bonding um, uh, within the mining industry when you already have a, uh, you already have um, financial surety requirements that are put in place through the BLM and Forest Service. So we're trying to reduce some of the redundancy uh, that leads to cost and, and typically uh, further delay. So we're, we're trying to work with, with our miners to, to ensure that they too will have strong, um, uh, strong opportunities uh, to advance um, economies, whether it's in southeast or in the interior uh, or around the state when it comes to mining. So those are some of the, the highlights. I know that I'm missing uh, a lot, uh, but I think it is important to recognize that through the bill that we have released today, many uh, of Alaska's uh, key initiatives have been addressed, whether it's how we access uh, our, our, our lands and our resources for development to strengthen our economy, whether it's how we conserve our lands um, for, uh, for use for Alaskans, uh, for recreation by, by our hunters, by our sportsmen. Uh, it's how we care for our indigenous peoples uh, in Alaska and around the country. Uh, and, and again, it's how uh, through funding uh, of the uh, EPA, uh, we ensure that there is a balance there, a balance uh, that, that ensures that we are caring for our environment while at the same time uh, not adding um, uh, unduly and unnecessary uh, regulation uh, that would, would thwart our, our opportunities and, and, and further hinder development. So trying to thread the needle, We'll have uh, an opportunity for amendments at the committee on Thursday and uh, far more discussion um, about what is contained in the bill at that point in time.